ambient temperature 34.68 degrees. Local time is 23.24.20 GST. All systems nominal. Hello and welcome to Operation Mirror Cage. Our mission today is to destroy the uh, Clan Wolf dropship Binocburn. Now we can, could go right over there now, but I think we better have a look around first. I know it's going to be defended. Ah, uh, yep, there we go. Now if you can get a line of sight on enemy max, even if they're shut down, you can see them from quite a ways away. Fire engaged. External camera engaged. I'm piloting a Kit Fox which, as we saw, does not have a very good torso twist, which makes it not particularly enjoyable to drive. It makes it difficult to aim properly. You can aim up and down okay, but left and right is kind of a problem. Now, as the Jenners are armed entirely with short-range missiles, I want to engage this guy from as long range as possible. Fortunately, my only my longest range weapon is the Ultra Auto Cannon 10, which has a range of 500 meters. So I'm going to have to get that close before I can engage this guy. Now the Auto Cannons in MechWarrior 2 are pretty good weapons for the most part, except for the Auto Cannon 2. fire very quickly and they do a lot of damage, but because they fire so fast and because you don't get a whole lot of ammo per time, you need to think a little more carefully about when you want to use auto cannons. The problem with the auto cannon too is it only does as much damage as a machine gun, but it weighs 20 times as much. Now, it has a really long range, but that's really not worth the trade-off. It's best to fire in short bursts so as not to waste ammunition. Now if you remember these Kit Fox's primary config has quite a lot of long range weapons so I definitely don't want to engage this guy at a range where he can hit me and I can't hit him back. So I'm going to let him get a bit closer before I take him on. Luckily the terrain in this mission is quite hilly, which gives me pretty good cover for the most part. Enemy See how effective the water cannon is. It really makes short work of most of the mechs in this mission. carrying five tons of ammunition, which is pretty much as much as I possibly could. For the most part in MechWarrior 2, you want to use your ammunition weapons uh, first, because every you don't want to have ammunition hanging around in your mech, because if you get hit and get a critical hit in your ammunition, it can explode, which can kill you pretty easily. So it's best to expend it as, as fast as you can, rather than trying to save it. Now this gen is powered up, but he's just standing there, so I don't know what's going on with him. I think I'll leave him for now. You might have noticed both of my arms have different amounts of armor. This is one of the nice things about the mech customization mech Ray 2. You can assign armor on a location by location basis as precisely as you want. So you can customize exactly what you think will work best. In this case, because I had the auto cannon in my right arm and nothing in the other, I pulled all the armor off my left arm and put it all on the right. Yeah, we've got a Kip Fox and a Storm Crow. For some reason, they're not coming directly at me. It looks like they're waiting for me to come over the hill. Ah, uh, here we go. This gen is finally working up. If you remember before I talked about the fatal floor of the Jenna, we're about to see it in action. Destroying the head location in MechWarrior 2 destroys the cockpit, which is an instant kill. Now for pretty much every mech in the game, the physical 
uh, appearance of the head location doesn't actually coincide to its hitbox. So you can shoot at what looks like the cockpit, but you'll just end up hitting the center torso. Now some of the mechs in the game, and the Jenner is one of them, don't act like this. The cockpit is right there in the middle of the mech, from the center, and it's very, very easy to hit. You can tell when you get a cockpit kill because the mech will stay in one piece after you destroy it. It'll still explode, but there'll just be a Hulk standing there. Now that would have been the case with the Jenna, but he kind of flew into me and uh, disintegrated on impact. I don't know what this Storm Crow is doing. It's just completely ignoring me and walking off into the sunset. I don't really mind. It makes it a lot easier for me if he's not fighting back. come back and finish off this kit fox. Now if you select an enemy mech and inspect it, it'll tell you who's piloting the mech. In this case it's Nova Commander Kathy. I'm gonna put her out of her misery. Enemy mech destroyed. Secondary objective. Destroy all enemy mech units. Successful. Alright, now we've got a clear run to the dropship and we'll be able to take it out with no problems. The dropship is another one of these targets that has entirely too many hit points, so you'll definitely want to bring along some energy weapons. I'm pretty sure this is a Confederate class dropship. It's about the right size and they can carry six battle mechs, which is how many we found in this mission. This thing is pretty small though. I don't know about you, but it doesn't look like it could carry six mechs to me. Now, the Confederate is a very old dropship design. It was uh, originally a Star League design, and it's been in service with the clans ever since. I don't think destroying these repair vehicles actually gets you anything, but, you know, they're there. You might as well shoot them. Since this dropship's going to take a pretty good while to destroy, I'll take this opportunity to talk a bit about the mech construction in Mech Ray 2. Uh, it's all based on the rules uh, from the Battletech board game. So every weapon, every bit of equipment and so on has the same stats as it does in Battletech. You can also sort of change the engine rating, number of armor points, and critical slot layout, everything you can do in Battletech. Um, you can assign weapons, ammo, equipment, however you like, to the critical slots on a mech. The arms have the most space, uh, followed by the left and right torso. Everywhere else is pretty full. The legs are full of actuators, the head has uh, the cockpit, as well as life support and sensors and some other stuff. And the center torso is mostly taken up by the engine and gyro. When it comes to equipment in Mech 2, there's only actually one useful thing in the list, which is a mask. The rest of the stuff in there is just lower arm actuators, upper arm actuators, I think, which don't actually do anything in Mech 2. In Battletech, they let you do melee attacks and pick up things and so on, but you can't do that in Mech 2. There are three optional technologies that let you trade off critical space for more weight. Uh, there's XL engines that take up uh, space in the left and right torso. Uh, ferrofibrous armor and endosteel internal structure. Now, endosteel and ferrofibrous armor are really nice because you can just put the critical slots wherever you want. When it comes to assigning uh, slots, you can match. putting things in the head and the legs is generally the safest place. Because the AI just aims at your torso, um, your legs are pretty safe because they're usually only going to get damaged by uh, splash, so explosions, PPCs, things like that, or if you're being shot from a low angle. Now, the head is pretty safe because as I mentioned it's hard to hit, and if you are getting hit in the head, you're not going to be lasting very much longer anyway, so it's a bit of a moot point. Ammunition you especially want to keep safe because the way ammunition explosions work in Mech Row 2, uh, and Battletech as well for that matter, is that all of the remaining ammo in that slot explodes and applies its full damage to that location. 
So, let's say we have a ton of machine gun ammo. Some machine gun does two damage, and one ton of MG ammo is 200 grounds. An ammunition explosion will apply 400 points of damage to whichever location it's in, which is quite a lot. For comparison's sake, a PPC does only 15 damage. Okay, we've destroyed a tiny dropship, so it's time to dust off. Looks like our friendly dropship is cruising in to pick us up. So I'll see you next time for Operation Bone Machine. Reached mission successful.